Welcome to Pop Turnative, where we dive into topical discussions from the worlds of pop culture, social media, and sports. Here is your host, Peter Romoliotis, aka PD Beats. Hello and welcome to the Pop Turnative Podcast. It's the podcast and talk show where we have digital discussions from the worlds of TV, film, pop culture, social media, sports, everything really, depending on the guests, we talk about it all. As always, I'm your host, Pierre Meliotis, on Twitter and social media, you know me as Petey Beats. You recognize my guest from Stargirl on DC Universe and the CW, she's been in a lot of other cool things as well, but she plays Tigress on Stargirl, she's a super villain, non-real life on the show, (laughs) we're with Joy (laughs) Osmansky. Joy, welcome to Pop Turnative. Peter, thank you so much for having me. No problem. Just wanted to clarify that you are not a supervillain in real life, because you never know. You, you know what? If you're right. You shouldn't take that for granted, but I want to make it very clear. It is called acting. And I but you know what? There are certain things about Tigress that I think are kind of awesome that I wouldn't mind embodying a little so more. Cool. Not the violent thing. She is like, so cool. She, she is went so out Oh. She's, she doesn't flinch. She's super confident. I think we could all use a little more. I mean, most of us. Um, so, yeah, I wouldn't mind taking that. I think that was episode six was the episode where we were introduced to, yeah. to Tigress and Sportsmaster. And I'm going to be honest with you. That was probably like one of my favorite episodes because it caught me... <laughs> Like from the beginning, right, where you and Sportsmaster are confronting, you know, your your daughter's coach, and you're just like, yeah. "Whoa, that escalated so quickly." You know what I mean? Okay, let let me just say, when Neil and I read the episode, we both were like, "Wait, we just kill him?" Like, <laughs> <laughs> like there's no, there's it's from zero to sixty in half a second. You know, there's no, there's no consideration. There's no like, let's think this through. Let's just eliminate. They just they're very efficient. And they just get things out of the way. No, absolutely. So, but we'll get into Stargirl. We'll get into some of your other projects as well because you've had a, such an amazing career. You've been in some so many cool projects, and it's Thank it's you. kind of hard for me too because like it's Stargirl is like the focus, but like there, you've done so many cool things in your career that there's gonna be like something that like is gonna be forgotten. You know what I mean? Because it's it's hard oh. to like you know. <laughs> That's fine. And, um, you know, frankly, it's fun when people recall things for me because I'm like, oh, yeah. Oh, I, yeah did I did that. that. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but I want to know kind of when it started with, uh, for you in terms of storytelling, performing, and acting. Like, when did you decide that that was oh. something you wanted to do? You know, Peter, I was actually relatively late to the game. I, I went to college. I studied writing and studio art. I came out of school. I was out for a while. I was a graphic designer. I had a whole other life. And then I just started to get bored and was like, I think I miss performing because I danced for most of my life. So I ended up going back to school for acting to grad school at UCSD and had a wonderful experience there. And then came to LA and was just like, why not? Like, I literally have nothing to lose and have just been fortunate and have subsequently put in a lot of, a lot of work, but have been fortunate here. And so you know, it was a process that grew out of just life experience. I, I was not one of those people that knew I wanted to do this. I really had to let myself figure it out. No, absolutely. And here we are. You're part of the DC universe and you are oh. Tigress. Has it has it hit you as it sunk in yet that you're part of Stargirl? You know, you think after literally it's been about a year since we shot episode six. And honestly, no, I cannot. no, it hasn't hit me. I mean, I feel like it's coming to me in waves. And, you know, after we wrapped, I was like, OK, we did that thing. And then all this time goes by and you begin to wonder if it actually happened. And then they start to build the buzz for it. And you're like, right, right. It's a real thing. For sure. And then people see it. And I think what's really started to cement it for me is the fan response, of course, because it's that's why we do it because we're so excited to bring this storytelling to to the viewers and the fans who are so dedicated and so knowledgeable to have them validate what we did. I mean, that's everything. It's huge. That is amazing. And can we just talk about how good the show looks? Uh, okay. I think it was around episode two when I was like, Oh, they got a lot of money. <laughs> it's insane. Like, it's like a blockbuster film and it's a TV show. <laughs> Yes, that's exactly right. And that's actually a really apt uh, description of it. There is so much in the budget, and I can see why Jeff knew what he wanted. He was very specific about the aesthetic and the level of quality that he wanted from the show. I mean, it is his baby, you know? This is such a deeply personal project for him. So 
And when that when that happens, when you're lucky enough to be part of something like that, then you're just on the receiving end of all this really careful, considered, thoughtful planning. And as an actor to come in kind of at the last minute feels really good. It's so cool. And we'll talk a little bit more about it. But um, I just wanted to say, I think it's really cool, too, that you've not only done like the acting, the live action, like you've done the voice acting as well. You did a voice on Duncanville. Yeah, and we just started season two. I actually had a table read for episode two earlier today. Oh, that's awesome. And you awesome. know, it's a new world. So I was not sure if it got renewed for season two. I had an idea, uh, but I just wasn't yeah. sure. Yeah, I we were all, I think we all just were so excited and happy because I can't speak for anyone else, but I'm just thrilled to have something to work on and be creative right now. And so it's been so lovely to see everyone, even though we're all little Brady Bunch squares. It's but pretty I still love it's pretty crazy to see because there are some people that have kind of like they've done a little bit of both, right? But hmm. like like Sean Jambroni, who's in the Goldbergs, he does a voice in the Solar Opposite. Oh. It's like there's people that go back and forth, yeah. but there's some people that do like specifically voice acting. And if you look at their IMDb's, like oh. I'm talking about Rob Paulson, I'm talking about Billy West, like it's it is crazy. Yeah, it can be an incredible career, um, but it is an extremely tight circle of people. And so those folks who have managed to build a career out of it are phenomenal because it's highly competitive. It, it, it seems it seems crazy. And I just love the animation of Duncanville, too. Like I'm a fan of like that type of animation, like the yeah, like too. the Bob's Burgers that kind of look a little bit like I love that. I love that yes. new kind of look. You know what I mean? I do, and I was really glad when I saw the aesthetic for it. I think the first time I saw it was the little picture of Jing, and I was like, oh, that's what Oh, that's what it's going to be. I'm so excited. I agree. It's pretty cool, too, because, you know, obviously with COVID, there's not a lot of conventions going on, but I've seen a lot of shows, like, there's a lot of different shows. Like, you could pretty much go to a convention for Stargirl, but I'm sure you'll have, like, that, like a couple of Jing fans who show up with, like, who want you to sign. <laughs> you never know. You know what I mean? Like, I know a lot of I friends would. that watch Duncanville. Like, it's pretty popular. Yeah. Well, good. I love that there might be some crossover. And we did just do, for Duncanville, a Comic-Con panel. So um, that we're definitely going to be there. And that's my first experience with anything Comic-Con related. That's amazing. And, of course, I desperately wish it was, like, a real-life thing. Yeah, it's but like a virtual I'll con? Yeah, yeah. But I'll take what I can get. And it was an honor to be involved with that. So I'm excited for fans to see that. And um, I'm sure Stargirl will have a presence. Stargirl? But here's the thing about Stargirl. A couple things. One, I was talking, I was joking to Eric Goins, who's a gambler. I called it like, I tur he felt like I turned, I coined it. It's like strategic screen time. Like everyone, like sometimes we see Tigress a lot. And then sometimes we see Tigress not a lot. But when we yeah. see Tigress, it's important. Yeah. Like, it has to do, do you know what I mean? So it's like strategic screen time. You know what I mean? It's true. You're right. It, it's very pared down. Um, you're right. She's never just sort of casually around. Yeah. Like, we saw you We saw you all at the game, which is important, because mm -hmm. that's how we were yep. kind of, inter like, in the last episode we're talking about, right? Yeah. Like, we all saw you at the game. Yeah, the helicopter parent, the super, like, uber-intense sports parent. And then you're part of, then... I think we see you again when you're like chatting with everyone downstairs, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Like what? Yes. Very and then briefly. Of course, ISA stuff. It's yeah, that really... that stuff. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. I mean, Neil Jackson. I've interviewed him on my show. He Icicle is literally like the coolest guy. He is such a sweetheart. I mean, we and I mean we had the best time in those. Did you ISA get my joke things. there though? He's the coolest yeah. guy. <laughs> Very nice. Very nice. I think lucky for him, he doesn't mind being told that he's cool over and over again. I mean, who would? Who would? So it's okay. It's all right. The cast, and the cast is just amazing. What I've noticed, too, is um, on social media, you know, can be seen as a double-edged sword. There's good and bad things about it. But I think one of the good yeah. things is the fans can kind of see that a lot of you are like still close and still kind of oh, talk yeah. and hang out. And it's really cool to see that with star girl. Like I find there's like cool relationships between like the cast members. You know what I mean? It's true. And um, that's not often the case. I mean, people will ask me about past shows. They're like, Oh, do you still hang out with blank? I'm like, no, no, no. <laughs> like, yeah. Don't. 
we don't keep in touch. <laughs> but actually, I think because we were all working out of town, you know, most of us were L.A. or New York based. So going all meeting up in Atlanta, we we're all away from our families. We're all away from our own beds. And so that really bonds you as a cast. No, absolutely. Um, we'll get back to your character. I mean, Tigress is is, is just so cool and so yeah. confident and so yeah. bad. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? <laughs> but she's awful. She is a sociopath. But I just got to say, your husband on the show, like Neil Hopkins, the sportsmaster, I'm from Canada. So yes. I'm a hockey guy. Oh, so okay. guess who my favorite villain is? Oh, well, Dude, that mask is so cool. Can I just oh say God. I want that mask so badly? <laughs> Listen, I when I first saw the rendering of Neil's costume, I was like, that's terrifying. And then when I saw him in it in real life, I was like, I, I don't know if I could look directly at you. Like, it's so cool. Yeah, it's a really primitive thing. I mean, I think the whole Jason thing has really inspired just hockey mask. Terrifying. And um, yeah, he But he his whole, it. like, your the, the whole, like, costume of Sportsmaster is uh, amazing. Like, I love it. It's like, so cool. I know. He looks so badass in it. It's it's a wonderful. You too. Oh, you're, well, you're, thank you. Your costume thank you. too. Like, what was your reaction when you first saw, like, the, was it like, was it a, like a, like, was it a drawing? Like, was it like a sketch? Or like, did you actually yeah. see, yeah, it was a sketch? No. So Marco was the incredible concept artist who did my rendering. And oh my God, I literally was like, I, I like I rolled up my jaw and then I was like, I'm just going to go start working out right now. Like, I was like uh, if you, if you just let me go exercise, I'll be, I'll be right back <laughs> because I, you know, it's inspiring uh, what Tigress wears. It's not that big. And um, uh, I was very inspired to live up to it because it's about being strong, you know, like there's no, there's no hiding in that no. wardrobe. So she has got to be powerful and confident. And I, I was really inspired to embody that. Yeah. It's yeah. There's definitely confidence. There's this, like, um, I just want so your character also is a parent and a, a, a parent of us, of a student athlete. So I want to yeah. know what is like Joy Osmansky's, even if it's a small one, like relationship with sports. Like, were you into sports growing up at all? Like, was there anything there in sports with you or? For me, no, it was less of a, I was less of a sports and more of a dance and music and that. All. But of course, if you go to any sort of school, you're going to encounter that and that mentality. And I certainly yeah. had friends who were athletes and, um, and I certainly understand the competitive drive that fuels an athlete and teams and things like that. So it's not hard to relate to. I mean, I, I might not be able to talk about the sports ball too yeah. much really with any amount of knowledge, but I'm actually always surprising myself that I'm like, Oh, I know that team is from Florida. Oh, that team is from Detroit. Or I'm always like, how did I know that? <laughs> but I don't know how I know that. But um, yeah, the competitive mindset is very easy to click into. So I actually thought of a question that I often ask a lot of, you know, um, because a lot of like, you know, a lot of characters on Stargirl are young up and coming actors, right? Who yeah. like, it's okay. And I, I want, I actually want to, I ask them this question usually whenever I have someone from like the 17 to like 22 range that are acting in shows. But I want your perspective for someone who's been in this industry for, for a long time. So you're working with a lot of these kids or young yeah. teens that are on some of the biggest shows on the planet right now. And, um... They're in an interesting position, in my opinion, because I find they are like there are people that are younger than them or their age that are looking at these shows and are inspired by them and look up to them and say, one day I want to be in Breck Basinger's shoes or I want to do that. You know what I mean? It's really cool. But at the same time, they are also young and learning and looking up to people as well. So they're kind sure. of like a middle, like the in the middle a little bit where they people are looking up to them, but at the same time, they're looking up to people and it's not just Stargirl you can relate this to any show out there you know what I mean do you know what I mean a yeah. little bit like, what do you think about that dynamic I do I think I think Jeff was wise he I mean Breck has so much experience and yes. she's such a professional he's a consummate professional mm -hmm. and so you know to put her in the lead was wise because that number one on the call sheet it all starts in there and trickles down anyone who's been on a set will tell you that yeah. and then to also support her with a lot of veterans like us and then also Actors who are young and have relatively less experience, but who have a real clear artistic sense. Yep. You know what I mean? Yep. And, and who are kind. Yes. And I remember talking to Jeff early on and being like, 
how come everyone here is so nice? Because honestly, <laughs> honestly, that that also is a dynamic that isn't always present. And everyone's there to do their job. And it's not like we all have to be best friends. But it makes a huge difference when the difference when the people are lovely. Yeah. And he really made sure that besides talent, yep. everyone is a good person. And that uh, I think that's why it gels so well. Absolutely. So. Yeah, so that dynamic of having having a younger cast who's in the process of learning some things that we might have learned a little bit ago, but it just I'm just as inspired by them. I really sure. am because you know they have a completely new perspective, and it's often a much more educated and world wise perspective than I might yeah. have had at their age. So I'm learning ton from them. No, absolutely. I, if, if they learn something from me, that might be accidental. Yeah, like, but it's I, funny. You're there if they need you, you know what I mean? Yeah. But, like, they're so well-seasoned in terms of, like, what – it's almost like you look at some of them. Like, I was talking, like, Trey Romano, right? Like, who oh, yeah. is hilarious on the show. Like, he, it's like he's just, like, a 40-year-old – like, someone was saying, it just, he's, like, a 40-year-old Italian oh, guy. Yeah. Locked in that, like that, kid's an, that kid's an old soul. Like, this isn't his <laughs> first time. This is not Trey's first time around. No, absolutely. Well, no, it's funny because I just thought of that dynamic because I said it at the top, Joy, like pop alternative. I interview like everyone, so I don't. I also interview yeah. athletes, right? And I'm a hockey guy from Canada, so I interview a lot of prospects that are going to get drafted in the National Hockey League, and their wow. junior leagues are established like their setting is like a professional setting. They're on the road playing certain teams. They have fans wow. come to their games, but they're still kids, and they're 16, yeah. 17 year olds. So they're in the same boat of what I'm saying, where like people look up to them, but they also are young looking up to the pros, right? So it's like that right. question could be asked in entertainment, but could also be asked sure. in sports as well. And I just found it interesting because there are a lot of shows that are leading on young actors and storytellers. Um, and look at Netflix, all of Netflix shows are driven, like yes. seem to be that genre right now. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's true. I think... I think the the younger generation of actors is really phenomenal right now. Like they're coming into this industry with their eyes pretty wide open. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I think there's so much more access to information and they're they're coming in with an understanding of the context of it. I think yep. much more than I did when I was their age. I was just like, I guess I'm here now. Like I didn't really have any sense of where I was or what I was doing. But they're much savvier than oh, I ever absolutely. was. Yes, no, yes. for sure. It is. It, it's it's inter it's an interesting world. It's an interesting dynamic. And Star Girl definitely is an example of that. That's why I wanted to kind of ask you because you know, like yeah. the four superheroes are like they're they're amazing. But like one can make an argument, their careers like are just are just like there's going to be so much ahead for them. You know what I mean? Oh, like, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, this will be this will be a wonderful memory at some point when they're at a completely different point in their career. And I. They're really lucky that this got to be one of the first big things they did because, like I said, it's unique. But it's 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 it must be difficult too. Like, do you see it too? Like, you see the big superhero, the big four, right? Like on social media, mm -hmm. there's so much craziness and fandom. Like, it must also be difficult for them to kind of balance everything, right? I I do think I, I couldn't possibly speak for them. Yeah, of Again, course. They probably they probably have ways of dealing with this and that that are much savvier than me. But with my little brush with it right now, yeah, it can get stressful um, because there's a very thin line between appreciation and a sort of odd sense of demand. Yeah. And suddenly you're like, but I don't I don't know you, and I I don't we don't have any relationship, and you want what from me? So there's. You, you get really good at drawing your boundaries and being okay with being like, that's the end. That's as far as I can go. And yep. now I need to protect my privacy and my family. So I think, I think learning how to do that is something, again, they're probably much more versed in it than I am because I didn't grow up with that. And it's been part of their world since day one. Absolutely. Well, Joy, thank you so much for coming on Pop Turnitin. This was awesome. Thank you. Oh, Peter, it was such a pleasure. I appreciate it. For sure. And we can't wait to see more Tigress. Like, give yes. us more Tigress. Yes. And give us more Sportsmaster because his costume, his mask is awesome. And I want to see more of it. Cool. <laughs> Neil, just po Neil just posted on Instagram, like, a still of his character. And I kept, like, oh. looking at it, like... <laughs> For like 20 minutes. <laughs> no. For hockey fans, it's, it's a real... You understand, right? 
I do. I do. I bet I if do. I didn't tell you I was a hockey fan, you probably would have like when I said I was from Canada. I, yeah. <laughs> I, I think I could have intuited that. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So people obviously can watch Star Girl now. I mean, yes. on DC Universe, and then it, it airs also on CW. And then at one point during the week, people could watch it for free on the CW app, I believe. That's right. Yeah. So there's so a lot of totally ways to watch it. There's no excuse. <laughs> Tigress, <laughs> calm down. <laughs> calm down, Tigress. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, that was a bit intimidating. That was like a little bit of Tigress coming in there. You better watch it. <laughs> um, where can people follow Joey Osmansky on social media to keep uh, up the date so... with everything? <laughs> Sure. So I'm at Joy Osmansky on Twitter and Instagram. And you can also watch Duncanville. It's all available on Hulu. And Boom. that is that is at your fingertips. Oh, that's great. I'm glad I brought up Duncanville because yeah. I was like, that we gotta bring that up. You know what I mean? Like I feel like cartoons are like the first like stress release like oh. TV show. You know what I mean? Like you just, you had a tough day at work. You just want to put family guy on. You just want to put like oh, Simpsons totally. on. You know what I mean? Yeah. Pure escapism. Yeah. Absolutely. For yeah. sure. Well, seriously, thank you so much and uh, good luck for the remaining season of star girl. Again, I hope we thank see more you. tigress. We'll see. Because it's week by week. It's not like it's all dropped. Like every week we got, to we're waiting. You know what I mean? I love it. It's, just like the old fashioned way. I love it. <laughs> if we could actually gather around a water cooler, we would do that. <laughs> well, this has been Pop Turnative, youtube.com slash Pop Turnative for previous episodes. Until next time, this is Joy Osmansky and Petey Beats signing off. Thank you for tuning in to Pop Turnative. Make sure to check out our past episodes of Pop Turnative on YouTube. Be sure to like Pop Turnative on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. This has been an Autograph Communications production.